Now you all know I love to quilt, but I'm also a huge foodie. That's right, I just love to eat. And I believe the second greatest invention right behind the spork is the tortilla. If I could put every meal in a tortilla, I certainly would. And so today we're putting the tortilla to work in the quilting studio. That's right, we're making the very basic burrito pillowcase. That's right, today's tutorial is the basic burrito pillowcase. A lot of you have done this before, and I'm gonna walk you through the basic steps here in just a second. Make sure you stay tuned. I do have some bonus footage for the end of the tutorial you're gonna absolutely love. And for the supplies today, we're using three fabrics, all from Michael Miller. The body of the fabric, you need three quarters of a yard, 27 inches, and I'm using a jet black, which is a solid, okay? We're gonna talk about right sides up as we go through this, though. I'm using the Fairy Frost Clementine. This will be the two inch little strip or a little trim band on there. So you'll need a quarter yard of that. And then this is super cool. This is Fairy Frost. It actually glows in the dark. So when you turn the lights off at night, right before bedtime, your pillowcase will glow. And this is gonna be that nice big uh, cuff at the end. We're gonna need a 10 inch piece. So get yourself a half a yard because you're gonna wanna pre-wash all of your fabrics, maybe even twice before you get started. These are a washable, finished project so we always pre-wash fabrics before we make our cuts when we're doing washable pieces. So let's get started. So step one was to take that trim fabric and cut it into a two inch strip. So this was two inches wide. And then I've gone ahead and I've pressed it with the right sides out so it's now an inch wide by the width of the fabric. Right now for all of this, everything is staying the width of the fabric. I'm gonna teach you how to trim it all down because not all fabrics are the same length. I don't know why we're not even gonna bother talking about that today. So step one is getting our trim ready, the two inch piece ironed right sides out. Then we're just gonna go right into burrito format. Check this out. So first of all, you're gonna take your cuff fabric, that 10 inch piece. It is going to lay, and this is really important because it gets a little tricky, right? It is right sides up. The glow in the dark is hard to see until we turn off the lights, that's fun. But you can see right on the selvage, the selvage has got the printing on the right side of the fabric. So that means that it's right sides up right now. Then we're gonna take the body of our pillowcase, the 27 inches, and we are laying this selvage to selvage. And this, if it was a print, would also be right sides up. We're using a solid, so you can't get it wrong right now, so don't worry too much about that. But if you're using a print, right sides up, right sides up. And the third piece, believe it or not, right sides up again. So I'm gonna take this trim and I'm laying it right down here. Let's point this out though. If you look close, all of my raw edges are facing out right now, okay? Back to the kitchen we go. We're gonna take and we're gonna roll our beans and our cheese up inside of our tortilla, the trim fabric. Then we're gonna bring this over just like you see here. And the fun thing is we are now technically stitching this. This is your double check. I would be sewing my white fabric, my cuff fabric, right sides together. So if all this out was out of the way, it would be right sides together. And that's how you know that it's gonna sew perfectly when we get started. Now. Because it's a bit of a handful, I want you to put a few pins as you go through. Let me show you how that turns out. So here we are with the pins already in place to keep everything nice and organized. And now I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine, probably bounce into caffeinated mode, and sew a quarter inch seam allowance through all of those layers at once. I'm gonna go fast. You take it nice and slow so that you get a real accurate seam allowance. I'm gonna just pull that first pin as I approach the machine. I never stitch over my pins. I always get them out of the way right before the foot lands. I'm gonna put this up here to keep a little bit of the weight up. And reset everything perfect for just a split second. And away we go. Okay, nice and easy that was. Now for today, I put some green thread in the machine so you can kind of see what I'm doing as I go along. Um, of course, you'd want to be matching your threads, but this was mostly for the benefit of the video. And those of you who know my tube turning technique tricks, wow, that's a mouthful. You're probably wondering why I didn't lay my cording in here. If not, check out my quick tips. It's a really cool thing you can watch. 
I'm going to turn this thing right sides out now. I'm just going to go ahead and grab the body of the pillowcase itself and start slowly and gently turning this back to right sides out. And I'm going to get my iron warming up while we're waiting here. Just pull this through here because we're going to want to press our trim piece over. Look at that. How awesome did that turn out, right? So that's really easy. And at this point, the benefit of this is there is no raw edges anywhere so that when this is washed over and over again, even though we've pre-shrunk the fabrics, we won't get all that raveling in the washing machine. Now, I'm going to press this real quick and then I'm going to show you how to trim it down so that all the fabrics are the right size or equal sizes. I'm just going to run the iron over this kind of quick. And actually what I'm looking for is more of this crease up along the top, getting a nice crisp edge because I'm going to kind of use that as a measuring point. Just like that. Now what we're going to want to do, we're going to actually sew French seam. So I'm going to fold this right sides out as I'm preparing myself here. I'm just going to take a minute, get everything nice and crisp, give it a little shake <laughs> and a drop. Okay. So we've got this. Now I'm going to take this here. The fold stays as part of our pillowcase. So now I can just fold this up this way, spin it. I'm actually looking at some numbers on my mat. So I'm at 12, so I'm going to come down here to 32 because I want about a 40 inch pillowcase now. And I'm looking at the line down here on my ruler. And I'm also kind of looking at the line across the top to make sure everything looks as square as possible. And with a good amount of pressure, because I'm cutting through a lot of layers, I'm going to initiate a cut that will be square because my pillowcase is folded down here nice and square. Okay, perfect. Just like that. Super easy. And now we are ready to make our French seams. A French seam, you start by putting together the wrong sides of the fabric, or basically the opposite of everything we've learned before. So we're going to start sewing it like it was finished, just like this. And I'm going to start with a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm just going to go down. Let me do it this way. I'm so excited to sew. I'm going to go down and around the pillowcase. So we're starting up at the top. Again, on the correct sides of the fabric with a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so we have stitched on the correct sides of the fabric with that quarter inch seam down and across the bottom. So the sides are all connected now. Here's the trick for the French seam. So I'm going to now turn this back to what would be right sides together or wrong sides out. We're going to move our needle position over to about a half of an inch, maybe even a little larger if you'd like, like a 5 8 garment seam. Get your corners nice before you start. And we're going to sew this again, and that's going to enclose the seam allowance we just created. And by doing that, we are now finishing all the edges. So again, no loose fibers over years and years of fantastic pillowcase usage, right? If you wanted to, you could press this right now. I have the seam allowance to keep me straight, so I feel pretty comfortable with that. And I'm just going to bring my needle up so that I can move it over considerably. And we're going to do this again to finish that seam. Okay, so that was that second seam. Just to reiterate, wider than the first and all the way around the side and the bottom. And now we're going to turn this thing back to right sides out. And the fun part about this is that 
when I first did it, I used two quarter inch seam allowances and all the threads were still hanging out on the other side from the fabric. So make sure that second seam is nice and wide, maybe even five eighths if that works better for you. But look at this as we come around, we've got our fantastic pillowcase. Give it a little snap like that with our trim and our glow in the dark cuff. But I know based on all the fantastic feedback my fans are sending in that you like the fact that Rob comes up with a little different approach at man sewing. So if this is your standard burrito pillowcase, here comes a bonus tutorial. Are you ready? Are you seated? Because Boo! It's not a pillowcase, but it's an old fashioned trick or treat bag. That's right, Halloween's coming up and you're gonna need something fun to carry all your loot around in the neighborhood, right? Let me teach you how I did these. Now, I know you know my trick. So this is just raw edge fusible applique. In other words, I've used my heat and bond feather light to trace. Couple of tricks though. These are all part of our free printables. Thanks again, art department. Now the ghost, you can basically trace from either direction, right? So the ghost, I just laid my fusible web on, deployed my Sharpie and traced around the edges. But when you're using fusible web, remember it does flip everything. So I did need to flip my lettering for the word boo so that it would come out correctly, right? And in order to do that, one of my tricks is I take the printable, just download it and print it out. And there's several choices. I think we've got five or six different ones in this one. And then I Sharpie marker around the outside edge of what I want to trace. So that when I'm done, I can flip it over and that actually becomes my trace side so that it's transposed. So that when I lay this down, you can see it fits right there on top. When I cut the letters out, now it's gonna be legible. So you gotta be careful. Letters like S and T you can get away with, but if it's an L or a J boy, it's gonna look pretty darn funny. So that's the trick. Then you just press them down wherever you like. And I sat and stitched around the edge. Ladies and gentlemen, there is glow in the dark thread available out there. And that's exactly what I've done around the edge. So there's another perimeter, a satin stitch about two and a half millimeters wide and about a half a millimeter long on your satin stitch. And if that seems like a little too much work or maybe there's too much ghost for you that way, check out this side. That's right, this is just a straight stitch around one of the printables. And let me show you how I transferred that right onto the right side of the pillowcase. Now, of course, these markings and the satin stitch of the ghost were done before I made the pillowcase so that I could be on the other side. But this is our old fashioned waxed tracing paper. It works like a carbon paper. And you know what? If any of these supplies are hard for you to find, we have a description below the video that has a landing page. And so we have links to all of these supplies if you ever need. That's, that's how we do all of our videos. But check this out. So I'm gonna take this and lay my colored side and I'm choosing a lighter color so it shows up on the black fabric. I'm going to lay that down and then I'm going to take my image, my printable, and I'm just going to take and I like to use a red pen so I can see where I've already worked and traced there. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to start to go around my ghost. And I'll just go around the outside of the ghost real quick so you can see how this works. Of course, you would want to trace your eyes and nose as well, but I'm going to have to just wipe this off. And that's the benefit of these wax tracing papers is they really do come off pretty simply. I like to use baby wipes. The unscented baby wipes will take them off very nicely as well as you can brush them off. Another trick, if you're doing a bunch of detailing, you might want to occasionally go back and re-wax so that you can see better. Now, it doesn't show up real dark, but it's just enough of a faint line that you can see as you go around. And then the next trick is, is when I'm using my sewing machine, this is not free motion, ladies and gentlemen. What I'm doing is a standard straight stitch with my feed dogs up. And then my trick is, as I come around, like say this, this is my needle, right? I come around and when I'm doing a curve, about every two or three stitches, I'll take and I'll just start to rotate my fabric and rotate my fabric as I go. So I get a nice arc, but I have the benefit of the feed dog so that all my stitches look nice and easy even. So it really couldn't be easier than that to jazz up a basic pillowcase to make yourself an awesome trick or treat bag. And I am just dying to find out from all of you, what are you going to be for Halloween this year? So put it in the comments below. And while you're planning your awesome outfits for this year's holiday, I'll be working on great new projects for you here at Man Sewing.